So let's answer this frequently asked question is, why do I have bad breath? No one wants to talk about it, but everybody wants to know about it. Yep. It's <laughs> so true. <laughs> So what can well, contribute to bad bet? This is what happened. So someone, it's like a big chapter uh, that I wrote. Um, technically, the term for bad breath is called as like halitosis, similar to Harry Potter spell. But, um, you know, everybody was contributing for the textbooks. And someone asked me, what chapter did you write? And I told them it's the chapter that no one wants to talk about it, but everybody wants to know about it. Yep. <laughs> so true. So let's hear, let's hear some more. What are some, I know there's one real big reason why people often will experience halitosis and what is that? So simple, like, you know, I want to simplify things rather than make it too complicated. We already have enough complexities. Yes. So one is just like, okay, mouth, mouth-based problems, like gum disease, poor oral health, that can contribute to this kind of bad breath, plus like tongue coating, uh, changes with the bacteria within the mouth, they're all local factors. And apart from these local factors, there can be a very huge component of the systemic factors. And believe it or not, this is a classic condition where we can easily establish the mouth and body connection, right? Yep. So if you have diabetes, your breath is going to be a little different. And if you have like kidney disease, it's going to be different liver disease, it's going to be different. And they have very characteristic smells to it. Like for example, if patient is like having uh, diabetes, they may have some fruity odor, like a sweet odor in their mouth, in the breath. And someone who has lung abscess, my goodness, that breath is going to be really, really bad because that um, the sulfur components that create that you know smell comes through the blood and gets exhaled through the breath, not it's not like in, in the mouth. You can go ahead and see a dentist have cleaned, but then the mouth bad breath does not resolve. It's because it's the body odor that kind of transforms into the breath, and that's why you get the bad breath. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Like how these things connect with the mouth. Yes, and it reminds me that when I was in med school uh, and was on rotations, and it was anything that had to do with the mouth, I was always. You go look, I'm like, no, this is a learning opportunity. Like, why do we ignore the mouth when it comes to medical training in the United States, at least, when there are so many signs of systemic conditions, as you just mentioned, that can show up in the mouth. Like, even if you look at the mouth, it's like a window to the body, right? Yes, it's so true. It's so true. And, and also thinking, you know, the common reasons why people also might have bad breath um, that are more local to the mouth is that coating on the tongue, as you mentioned, a lot of times people aren't taught to use a tongue scraper or that your tongue can harbor all these bacteria that contribute to their bad breath. So it's the coating of the tongue. It's tricky and unique because um, if we imagine, of course, you know, uh, if we imagine like, well, like filaments sticking out on the tongue, and each and every filament can actually have like a room to accommodate the bacteria. And if it is trapped and if they, it kind of accumulates that epithelial cells grows like a hair and there is a term called as hairy tongue, mm -hmm. isn't it? It yeah. feels gross, but actually that happens because they're not like debriding the tongue. So not like typically like taking a scraper and like clearing it, scraping it. But instead, it's like they bring it out. It's like cleansing action. And once they kind of have that cleansing action, it eliminates the possibility of that bacterial entrapment within that filaments. And when you see like a nice, smooth, pink tongue, and that's what everybody wants to have, except that if you're having a coffee, you can get a coffee breath, but it gets like that coffee like coating on the tongue, right? Yeah. And of course, there are other possibilities with like tobacco use mm -hmm. um, that can also create that nicotine uh, deposits on the mucosa, which is like, uh, you know, the smoke. When you smoke, all these smokes that kind of layer on the, in the, inside the mouth, and it can just pre prevent that, you know, um, what do you call that? Like the breathing of that epithelium. 
Yeah. And, and I was, yeah, and sorry. I kind of like uh, want to share something. So it, the, it, I think it was in the airport, probably these pictures like floated around. They had two rooms that, you know, with like smoking room and non-smoking room. And the smoking room had that like a brownish hue that's similar to that, the nicotine smell, uh, the nicotine coating happens in the mouth. And that actually gets like dissolved with the saliva and the epi epithelial debris and cast this like, smoke flavor in the breath. Yeah, and we see it a lot uh, adding to the calculus deposits and this, 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 the smell from the tobacco contributing to that. And also, of course, we have to say it's risk for the oral cancer with uh, not course. a great, yeah. And, and whenever I think about cleaning the tongue, I like kind of like the analogy of mowing the grass where the tongue scraper ah. becomes the, you know, the, the lawnmower and just making sure that it's kept and maintain so that you don't get all those different debris. As you're saying, you you know, it's really hard when you have a tall grass to see what's all going on and clean it. But then even with patients that have dryness of their mouth, that saliva is not cleaning. So they yep. have uh, increased risk for having that bad breath. Thank you.